Hi, I guess I'll get started. Thank you all for registering for the Pacific Trade e-conference and expo and for joining this session this afternoon. My name is Lerna and I'm the sales and operations manager for Restaurants Canada's RC Show. Today we have brought a couple of influential industry leaders to our discussion. So please allow me to introduce to you, Laura Purdy, General Manager at the Exhibition Place, and Michael Dargavel, Vice President at Association and Events Management. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we live in an age of innovation <laughs> fueled by the minds of leaders and visionaries in the events industry. People like yourselves are building the future and setting the course for what our world will look like in the months and years ahead. So let's jump right into our conversation about the new normal for trade shows and meetings. First of all, how are you doing? What a crazy few months it has <laughs> been for everyone, including our vibrant events industry. It's true. Well, I oh, guess I'll jump, I'll, I'll jump right in. Uh, how are we doing? Well, we are closed. So our vibrant mm -hmm. events industry has, uh, we've pressed pause on the industry uh, for this period of COVID. And uh, we are anxiously awaiting the time where we can uh, reunite and we can meet again face to face. And uh, in the interim, uh, we have been pivoting uh, in, in our industry and looking at alternate uses of our very large convention space. I manage a center that's a million square feet. So you can imagine there's um, quite a lot of overhead and quite a lot of staff components uh, to that. So we've been pivoting to try and look at alternate uses while we are in this uh, pause position for trade shows and meetings. It's been a difficult time. Yes, it has totally yeah. taken everyone by surprise and really challenged everybody's business. Um, so I guess you started the first question um, that I had for you both today. And the first question was, how would you describe the pandemic's impact on your business? Um, so since you touched on it a bit, Laura, I would ask Michael to maybe say a few words and what's going on on the organizer event management side. Sure. So. Um our firm is an AMC, so association management firm. So we currently represent four um, distinct industries. Um, so we represent not only the association, but also all the events that they do. So over the last, uh, I guess, six months, we've had to cancel trade shows, conferences, uh, educational seminars, board meetings, and annual general meetings. And I think the annual general meetings have probably been one of the more challenging ones. Um, almost every association has an annual general meeting, um, and they're all dictated by bylaws and you know procedures, regulations that are within the bylaws of the association. Um, and there's oftentimes even legal aspects of it that you have to pay attention to. So, with all of those cancelled, um, not to say we've been sitting around doing nothing, we've been very busy with. Um, you know, making sure that our members were ready to go back to work when they could um, and uh, getting guidelines in place for uh, different uh, industries. So it's been it's been a very challenging and um, kind of it's almost exciting, actually. It's uh, we've certainly been busy for sure. Yes, reinventing your business, I'm sure, was not on your plan, but um, <laughs> that is on everyone's strat plan right now. And um, like you mentioned, Laura, we do have to pivot and uh, we're not going to turn our backs on the industry that we love. So this is just us trying to get prepared for what's coming next. So I'm just going to ask um, the next question. What has been the most difficult decision you have tried to make so far in the pandemic? Laura? The, the most difficult and, and heart-wrenching decisions that we have had to make was uh, laying off some of our team, of course. And uh, we have um, tried very hard to keep as many of our employees uh, engaged in the workplace uh, and, uh, and on staff. But uh, inevitably, when you're in the events industry and you deal with uh, hundreds and hundreds of event personnel, 
um, and when there are no events, the there is a difficult choice that that we had to make, and we we did lay off um, several several hundred staff members uh, throughout the pandemic. But you know, as Michael says, we've been using this time wisely uh, with the staff that we do have, and we've been formulating um, a number of uh, res resumption plans, uh, safety protocols. Uh, really taking a look at our business and, uh, and and applying new measures as it relates to COVID. So uh, our venue, for example, was just awarded uh, the first Canadian venue to have uh, the GBAC standard, which is the right. the, the, uh, the uh, Global Risk Advisory Council. It's a standard of sanitation and um, and cleaning that we have embarked upon for our venue so that we can ensure that when we do resume, that we are ready for the public and the public can have a trust level with us uh, into coming into a safe environment that has um, standards and has credibility. So that's that's really important for us. But yeah, it's it's been a very difficult time um, and uh, exciting, yes, but I probably could have done without all this excitement. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the laying off of your staff is obviously the hardest decision, um, but uh, congratulations on being awarded that. I mean, as an organizer at your building, it's very reassuring for us to really come back and uh, have host an event there for 2021. So we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my next question uh, would be what principles are you using to guide your decisions moving forward? Michael, why don't you take this one first? Sure. Um, well, it's kind of difficult to know which way to turn. Um, everything is so uncertain. Um, we're relying very heavily on, uh, you know, obviously the government directives, the health minister uh, directives. Um, but we also have a, a GR team in place that um, we're relying on to, you know, to be on top of all that information that's coming in, sift through it and, and give us more of the highlights so that then we can, you know, disseminate that information as it's, as it's applicable to our different client bases. Um, and of course, as Laura mentioned, you know, the whole strategic management um, has certainly uh, come into play where we're paying a lot more attention to, you know, uh, making sure that everything that we're doing is aligning with the goals and objectives of the organizations so that we're, you know, just trying to get everything into the mix. Um, we're using a lot of, you know, our, intu our intuition has certainly come into it a lot more. Um, sometimes you just have to go with your gut feeling. Um, this is gonna be the best for now. So, you know, and then when we get more information, you know, things are changing so rapidly and um, <clears throat> the the initiatives coming out of the government's office are, are changing on a weekly, daily basis. I mean, now it's more weekly than daily, but, um, you know, just keeping on top of that information and making sure that we're disseminating what is appropriate to our, our different client groups is has been uh, a handful, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you would think actually as a event manager in the business, you would be two steps ahead, you know, always with a con con contingency plan in place. So it's almost mm -hmm. that you have to have so many different plans, A, B, C, and maybe even D, ready to yeah. deploy when the government decides on the next steps for us. Um, of course, safety coming first, uh, but we do have to think about our business operation and right. uh, how we can continue to keep going and actually thrive in the business, which it almost seemed like we were all at the top of our game and uh, it just kind of hit us every single person uh, by shock, right? But as a uh, professionals, I think we kind of have uh, an advantage when we can think quickly and act on next steps and keep going when it comes to decisions. I think we also need to embrace each other and embrace the power of our industry 
and and the the joint efforts and experience that we have across the country and indeed throughout North America um, of the industry professionals and the depth of knowledge that we have there. And that's one of the things that we've been leveraging during this time is our um, our collaboration with uh, the Canadian uh, exposition industry, the Canadian convention center industry, and, and the Canadian meeting industry. Um, business events is a, a very um, powerful uh, economic generator for the country. And together mm -hmm. we have to uh, work as a team. So we've been joining forces with, um, with TIO and TIAC and Destinations Canada and, and looking at all of these players as assets. So we're not, um, we're not a standalone entity. We are together as a as a unified industry, and that's how we need to uh, apply those principles when we're dealing with government and when we're dealing with public health, so that they understand that this has a, a wide sweeping national effect and a regional impact. So that's that's those are the principles that we've been utilizing. A lot of government relations, uh, a lot of advocacy. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's probably the one lesson I think we've learned uh, throughout this pandemic is that our industry as a whole needs to do more advocacy on a regular basis. The, the, the importance of face-to-face -face meetings and exhibitions is, um, has never been more important than, than it is now. People are isolated. People feel that they, uh, they need to reach out and, and see people and socialize with people. Okay. Um, for us, we need to move the needle forward uh, in respect of face-to-face -face meetings in a safe way, which can absolutely be accomplished. And I think we have to look at that together as an industry. Absolutely. And it's uh, it's funny, though, the saying, we're all in the same boat. I, we didn't realize how big this boat was. Uh, so many people that uh, we need to definitely have a united voice when we're speaking to the government and showing the the essential part of this business and what it does for our economy. Um, so I just want to actually uh, talk about preparing for venues and staff to ensure safe reopening is extremely important, as you mentioned. Um, and I recently actually received uh, and have been reviewing the Exhibition Place Business Events Safe Reopening document that outlines the recommendations. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, Laura, would you mind elaborating on some of these best practices to safely fully reopen? Absolutely. And that that document that you received is an ever evolving document. I think to, yeah. to yeah. Michael's point, as as health and government change their uh, direction or make uh, small tweaks, we ourselves are tweaking that document. So it's a live document. I think we're at version 10 uh, that we issued uh, out this week. And I think version 11 will probably come out next week uh, based mm -hmm. on the provincial guidance that has just been released with respect to uh, gathering numbers, the, the exemption that we received to have gathering numbers of 50 people per room. And those will in fact change our numbers uh, and our, on our strategy slightly as well. Um, what we're doing internally, first of all, it took us uh, several weeks of uh, intensive work to develop that document, that protocol where we analyzed right from the moment people leave their homes uh, and, and start to move forward to attend an event, uh, a meeting, a business event, exhibition, and what that experience looks like as soon as they hit the grounds of Exhibition Place and the communication that we need to provide to individuals to allow them to come into the convention center space uh, in an orderly, safe uh, method. And then the application of the, the GBAC standards for cleanliness, high touch point cleaning, and, uh, and staff training as it relates to uh, working in an environment of, of business, live business events again. So we've been focusing uh, our efforts quite a lot on the, the, the staff uh, component of it, uh, not only from an employer's point of view, but also from a public, a public entities point of view where we're interacting with the public. And, uh, and we've been doing some, some renovations. We've been um, upgrading our systems. For example, the, um, the systems in Beanfield Center that offer uh, room to room simulcast so that we can have hybrid meetings 
and allow our clients to have some face-to-face -face interaction, but also the ability to simulcast across the building. Uh, those AV systems have all been upgraded and are ready to go. Um, we've, we're actually doing the construction of our, our, our bridge that will connect us to uh, Hotel X, which is terrific as well. So we've been very, very hard at work. Um, working on the venue itself and also preparing our staff and the protocols for our face-to-face -face return. That's wonderful to hear and um, I wouldn't expect anything less uh, with the exhibition place. There are um, also actually many items on the organizers list of to do. So <laughs> Michael, um, yes. Michael, how yes. are you and your staff yeah. preparing to ensure you're ready? Yeah, so I would say the first thing is you know, there, there is a mountain of information to digest as, as a, um, you know, as an event producer. Um, so making sure that I have the correct information for the correct client group that I'm dealing with and the number of people and so on. So all of those guidelines that you have to digest and make sure that you're paying attention to those. Of course, the PPE, the personal protection uh, equipment that is um, uh, needed from everybody. Um, and I think one of the main things that uh, that we really need to focus on is communication. Um, making sure that uh, people who are either exhibiting or attending our events, uh, make sure that they're well aware of what's going on in the beginning. And this is a time where we can really change things up too and talk about, you know, doing things a little bit differently because really all of the old rules are kind of thrown out, you know, thrown out with baby with the bathwater kind of thing. So everything is kind of new and we need to look at things in a whole different perspective and, and decide, you know, is this still going to work for us? Because I think, you know, things like this platform that we're, that we're using, you know, it's a way of incorporating a, a whole new segment into our events where, you know, this can be part live and part uh, virtual. So there are all kinds of new and exciting um, avenues that can be explored. And I think that, you know, the main thing about all of it, though, is really um, the communication point. So making sure your attendees, your exhibitors, um, that they're aware of what's going on and, and what the protocols are when you, when you arrive at the venue. Absolutely. I think communication is the, the gateway to feel, making sure everyone feels confident. Um, and, you know, there's not, at this time especially, there's not going to be uh, enough communication going out as things are changing rapidly, just keeping everyone informed, um, having all the signage on site, having people directing on site. There's really, um, it's, it's up to both um, the organizers to get ready um, just as much as the venue. So uh, I appreciate your answers for that. Um, so let's uh, stick with Michael for a moment from the event management side. How, uh, what are you, other than the communication, is there anything else that you're doing to ensure consumers' confidence is uh, in attending live events in a safe way? Um, yeah. Um, so obviously communication is, you know, be honest about what's happening. Um, and, and I think there's, you know, there's an overload for everybody, obviously. So you need to know your audience and direct your communications appropriately to them. Um, be consistent. Um, you need to provide value. You need to be inspiring. Um, all of this on top of, you know, uh, all of the protocols for safety. And, um, you know, I, I really think that it is about collaboration now, as Laura was saying, that it's, it's not, you know, it's not just my event. It is, you know, it becomes a community at this point. So I think, you know, we just have to keep looking outside and asking for help where we need it. Um, and again, you know, being honestly communicating with our attendees. Yeah, being candid is very important at this uh, time. Uh, Laura, anything to add on this point? I think frequent communication. I mean, Lerna, you've you you're on the receiving end of our client communication, and we've been communicating on you know every week to ten days throughout these last six months, which is more than we've ever communicated right. directly with our clients. And in addition, our our sales team is outreaching 
to all of our clients, making sure everyone uh, has the support and the guidance that they need. Uh, it's essential at this time that that we communicate with our clients. And I think it's also essential that our clients are communicating with their attendees because the attendee, the consumer confidence aspect of this uh, is, cannot be uh, understated. People need to feel confident that we have their best interests when they come into our venues and to our events. And, and communication is going to be key. Absolutely. Um, you know, creating uh, a step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, highlighted, you know, email communication. These are all things that as an uh, event manager, organizer, we're doing just to make sure that people can see it um, point by point in all the efforts that have been taking place to this point and actually going to take place at the live event as well. Um, so speaking about... Are you even going... Ahead. Even going old school, I, I was going to say, even going old school and, you know, picking up the phone and actually talking to people, um, I think people really um, are craving that connection. Um, and I think that that kind of, you know, moving out, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but I'm getting, you know, several hundred emails every day. So sifting through emails is not always the easiest form of communication for me. Um, sometimes just having a phone call. And I know that people don't use their phones for phoning anymore, but, um, you know, maybe a little novel, you know, step back and do something old, a little old school and uh, reach out to people on a on a one to one basis. Yes, it's actually um, different and more inviting when you receive this call now. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my goodness, I'm hearing a voice. This is this is refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, and where we kind of you know, because we were so busy, we were just sending, you know, emails and just getting things done that way it was just the way to do it. But now definitely craving more of a contact with our clients. And um, other than, you know, emailing, like you said, you were making phone calls. Um, how, how how are you, Laura, keeping uh, connections with your clients? Uh, I'm sure you have so many things to take care of, but I know how important it is for Exhibition Place and their clients to keep in contact. And we've lost that. I mean, we're, we're our offices are down the street from you and we can't even just stop by anymore. And it's so strange, right? And um, how are you keeping contact with some of your clients? Well, we, you know, we do have, uh, you know, the basic newsletters that go out uh, as, as a broad sweep. Uh, we are doing, um, I think, to Michael's point, I'm on the phone. It is, you know, six of my 15 hours a day, I'm on the phone uh, and, and having <laughs> phone calls and, and conversations with, uh, with our clients. Uh, you know, using, using tools like LinkedIn is super important because, as we know, in this industry, the longer this, this, COVID pandemic continues and our industry is on pause, uh, it's some people, our clients are getting laid off and our clients in the event industry are getting mm -hmm. laid off. So we need to look at alternate ways to try and keep in touch with people. And, you know, not everyone, um, you can't call that office number anymore. Uh, right. So we're, we're, we're okay. you know, we're doing a lot of uh, sleuthing and investigative work to try and, and make those personal touch points with our clients. And, and we're doing that across the board with our events team and our sales team. Um, and it, it's, it's difficult. We're again, engaging with industry. Um, there are some, you know, great zoom meetings that we've all been on um, yeah. with the industry just to see people and, and have that, that, that touch point. Um, I think people think hybrid um, or, or digital is going to take over. Digital is not going to take over. Digital is going to be a component of you. You cannot replace face to face. You cannot mm -hmm. replace the the interaction, the body language. You cannot replace those um, those subtleties that we need for um, for business to continue. So. Right now, we're doing alternate things, um, but we're doing alternate things with a view to having resumption of face-to-face -face meetings because we all need to be with each other in a safe way, um, and and that's what we're that's what we're striving for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the, I mean, we, we've been in the age of online shopping, and um, that's been going on for a couple of decades now. So that's still. 
and our events have been so lively, our live events. So, I mean, there is a good indication that the face-to-face -face is definitely key in business connections. Um, I mean, we can, we can, for the interim, take advantage of all the different platforms there are to connect and different ways. You know, the Zoom has obviously been very popular uh, in all of our meetings. Um, and I think it's going to be around, but, you know, there, it isn't, it isn't uh, illegal or anything frowned upon to meet up with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we can have our masks on and we can meet somewhere in a public place. The restaurants are open. You know, it's not that we shouldn't see each other face-to-face. -face. So I think once people can graduate into this thinking, uh, we will still continue to push forward. Um, and, you know, all of the efforts that you have been doing with the CAEM task force, you know, we're really hoping that we can get to where we want to be by next year. Um, sooner would be very, um, like, hopeful and amazing. But I understand that it's taking some time because there is some, there's so much uncertainty. Um, and hoping that moving forward, we're going to be able to see more hybrid events um you know but with the live with the live uh, component especially coming from a food and beverage show i mean you really want to be there and taste the food and you know sample so it's a completely different experience of course um but the human connection definitely has to continue and we will do whatever it takes <laughs> whatever we're allowed to do safely um and Lerna on Lerna on that actually I think it's very interesting that you know you have a you have an event where uh food is a huge component of it um and what kind of guidelines are you guys looking at for to put in place for that because obviously you're going to have some pretty stringent rules mm -hmm. um, going forward. Yes, we are okay. working with uh, Toronto Public Health and definitely going with their expert advice, uh, working to make sure that everyone's safe and following protocol. Um, the good and reassuring thing is knowing that we're not in it alone. We're not inventing the rules. Um, we have guidance, we have support, and it's just a matter of being prepared. And I think we are um, at that stage where we're ready to start and we're learning and um, we're going to go day by day, see how we can, how far we can go. <laughs> so um, I guess we don't really have time for any questions from the live audience, so apologies for that. Um, I'm hoping this was a very informative and reassuring session for all. Um, I have no doubt that we will get back to a place of comfort and enjoyment safely, of course. And uh, thank you again both for your time. And I hope to see you guys live soon um, in a face-to-face -face meeting. Yes, I, I miss definitely. you guys. And I'm really thankful to have you be a part of this session and hope uh, you enjoyed yourselves today. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Yep. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.